I recently photographed the 2024 solar eclipse in Story, Arkansas. And while I was post-processing the photographs, I came across two unorthodox things that I don't typically use much in my workflow at the Adobe Camera Raw level because I typically do these types of things in Photoshop. But what I found was that they were absolutely imperative for helping me bring out some of the detail in my solar eclipse shot. So I wanna share those with you. This is the Corona shot that I wanna to talk to you about that I, I think that these tools that I, that I typically don't use are gonna be very helpful. So when it comes down to post-processing these solar eclipse shots, especially with the Corona around the outside of the moon like that, you're really balancing black and white. And there isn't a whole lot of white, but there's a ton of black. So you're trying to push your highlights, but if you push them too far, everything just gets blown out. And that's what I found here. So I'm gonna go into the light section here and show you what I'm talking about. Right now I'm in about negative 31 highlights. But if I want these highlights to come out here so I can see what's happening in that coronal blast right there, I pull this up and I lose some of the, the detail and the data that's happening inside that corona. And that's not exactly what we want. So I had to bring those highlights down quite a bit in order to make this work. So I needed to go to another tool. And the tool I'm gonna to use for that is actually color grading. You're like, wait, color grading? Well, I don't want any color in my solar eclipse images. We'll get to that point. But in the color grading section, you have access to three different properties of your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows. And if we break that down, you'll see here just by, I don't really like using these circular things right here. If we break that down and we go into our shadows, you'll see that we have the hue of those shadows, the saturation of the color that we're putting into those shadows, and then the luminance of those shadows. You also have blending and balance at the bottom, which that is what dictates how these colors are going to mix with one another. Now, I'm not using color here. What I'm going to use this for is actually for tonal data, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because it's called color grading. But what I found is that in these sliders, the luminance specifically, there's like this micro edit that we get into the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, and what it defines as a highlight, midtone, and shadow versus what the light section of Adobe Camera Raw dictates as a highlight, midtone, and shadow. I know that sounds crazy, but I really don't know how to explain it because I'm not a pixel scientist, but I do know that after I repeat something several times and I see a pattern that something tends to work there. So what I'm going to do here is go into these shadows and show you this. If I go into the shadows and I look at the luminance of those shadows and I bring this down, I can tighten the amount of darkness around that area. Now, this is much different than going up into your lights and then pulling down on the black because that will just swallow everything. And I did not like that. OK, so this is what led me to use color grading to open up these shadows a little bit so that I could get a little bit more of that grayish tonal value around the outside of the Corona. I'll also go into my midtones. And in the midtones, I'm really going to be looking in particular in, in the gray areas that are around the Corona. So if I bring the luminance up there, you can start to see that I actually get a little bit more of that glow. And when I do, and I zoom in here, that glow is actually coming out around these areas where I could not pull that out with the light sliders with the shadows because they move too fast. They pick, they take a bigger tonal cluster of what they consider shadow to modify and edit. Now, I, like I said, I don't know exactly what's going on behind each one of these sliders, but what I can tell you is that it feels like in the color grading section, it takes a smaller uh, tonal cluster of what it considers a mid-tone, a highlight, and a shadow, which gives me this micro ability to go into the highlight, mid-tones, and shadows to make those Corona blasts look really good. So I'm also going to go into the highlights now and then bring those highlights up quite a bit to draw out as much light as I can around that. And you're really going to see that pretty much up here. What it looks like down here is that this is really going to be more of where the midtones are. Okay. So now that we've got that set, I can look at how we want these to blend. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. I'm at 67.6%. Let me go about 50% so we can see everything here. This blending slider adjusts how far each of these individual highlights, midtones, and shadows are going to blend into one another. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down and see what that gives me and then bring it up. And again, this is all about the, the, the idea of working very minimalistically. If I work too fast on these Corona images, what's going to happen is it's just gonna break down, things are gonna to get too bright or they're gonna to get too dark and it's gonna happen way too quickly.
Now, the balance is, do we want that to be favored more on the dark area or do we want that to be favored more on the highlight area? In this case, I think I want it favored a little bit more on that highlight area so it's balancing more towards those mid-tones and those highlights than it is towards those shadows. Now, that is all fine and well. We have really used color grading here and just the luminance data of color grading to make uh, the corona a little bit more visible. There's one more thing that I use that I very rarely, if ever, touch, especially in my landscape photography, and that's texture and clarity. Typically, when I use these sliders, I feel like I get a contrived uh, feeling of what texture is, and it, it makes things too crunchy, uh, clarity makes things too sharp, but what I found on these images is that when I increased the texture here, I started to bring out some of that detail in the corona in a really wonderful way. When you move that down, you can see that when we move the texture down, we don't get any of that Corona texture. We move this up and we start to see that Corona texture really wonderfully. The next one was clarity. If I move this up, you'll start to see that I get a lot more noise in there. And this doesn't look real. Like I said, it, it starts to feel uh, crunchy and I don't like that. I, I, again, I'm not a pixel scientist, but essentially what I gather is that the micro contrast around smaller detail areas, the area of highlight next to shadow is being uh, tightened, which makes this effect. So I don't really care for it too much that high, but as I bring this up a little bit, I can start to see that Corona even more around the moon. And then you can even use dehaze also, and that will tighten up the amount of shadow area around there, or you can loosen the amount of haze there, which will give us a little bit brighter of a Corona, depending on uh, which direction you wanted to go with this image. But just to show you here, if we turn off the color grading, we lose a lot of that detail, that micro detail in there around the Corona. If we turn off the effects here, we lose a lot of that Corona as well. And I think that's a wonderful uh, way to see that. Much better than just trying to do this all with the light. Now, after you get this set up, after you do your color grading and your effects, you can also go in here and see what happens as you move these light sliders to see if you can get more out of that or less out of that. And I feel like I get a lot more benefit by moving slower, you see even just a slight modification here and it's gone. If I bring the highlights down like I normally do, we have nothing, right? If I bring the highlights up too high, it just breaks down. Everything breaks down so quickly in this raw file because all we're working with is pure black and basically mid-tone values, not even pure white, especially if we didn't take the image to the point that it was blown out. Now, I did have another image, this one, where I did go a little bit creative with this one. And with this one, I went into color grading and I not only used the luminance adjustments here, but I also did add a hint of color in each one of the shadows, midtones, and highlights to make this feel a little bit more inviting for the viewer. I feel like this is a little bit too sharp. It's just white and it's just black. But by even adding a little bit of color to that, while I was working with the luminance values here, I felt like I got a, a really handsome color grade that's subtle enough, but still invites the viewer in. So if you did want to experiment with that, if we bring these down here into our highlights and we'll bring these down into our shadows and then or that's our midtones, and then I'll bring this down into the shadows, okay? What I essentially did here was I wanted the, the darker areas to get a hint of blue to kind of feel more like space or what we think space to look like based on the movies that we've seen. Okay, the space is probably pure black. But by doing this, I increased the saturation of the amount of blue that is surrounding that uh, shadow area there and we get a nice, beautiful blue coloring on there. Then I went into the midtones and I said, well, where are the midtones to begin with? So I brought up the saturation and noticed that the midtones are pretty much around that corona there and in some of the flaring light that's coming out of there. And red is too harsh. So I moved this over to warm it up a little bit to make it a little bit more on the uh, yellowish orange side. And then did very much the same with my highlights here, brought this up and then bring this hue over into that area there. So these are things that we typically don't think about using in our workflow very often. And actually you will hear me many times tell you, I do not use color grading at the raw level. And most of the reason why is because I don't feel like I have enough control over my images with color grading at the raw level. So I typically do that in Photoshop. I'm not using these sliders to really color grade these images though. I'm using these color grading sliders to get more into my highlights, midtones, and shadows and get more out of those areas, which is actually starting to gather some ideas and some thoughts for me on how I can use the color grading section to possibly bring out more tonal depth 
in my landscape images, which is a theory that I'll explore going forward now that I figured out something here where we're not using color grade to color grade, we're using color grade to get more tonal value in those micro tonal areas that the highlights and shadow sliders in the light section typically work too fast. We can get really slow in those micro areas. Again, it's really kind of hard for me to explain. I just know that based off of looking at these images for hours, these were imperative for helping me with my solar eclipse shots, and I certainly hope they are for you as well. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to make difficult things in Photoshop seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.